Thank you for your interest in Curb Alert. We know that caring for and protecting your stingray is very important to you. And because of that, we are dedicated to making sure you get the most from Curb Alert. With that, let's get to work. First, here's a simple list of the everyday items that you will need to complete this installation. Second, please confirm that your Curb Alert kit includes the accessories shown here. The first part of the installation of Curb Alert requires you to prepare the vehicle. This includes three easy steps. First is to remove this trim piece from under the hood. No tools are needed, just a firm grip and some carefully applied force to overcome the clips that hold this piece into place. Second, you need to expose the plus 12 volt DC stud that is close to the under hood fuse box. Remove the fuse box lid as shown here and then grasp the rear handle firmly and pull up to make some room. Using a standard flathead screwdriver, pry between the fuse box and cap. Third and final step to prepare the vehicle is to remove this door jam trim. Again, no tools are needed, just a steady firm grip and force to overcome the clips that hold the trim in place. Also, just above the trim you just removed is a soft rubber seal. You will need to partially remove the lower part of this trim like this. The vehicle is now prepared to accept Curb Alert. You will now use a standard coat hanger that has been straightened out with a hook formed on one end. While still under the hood of the Stingray, move to the front passenger side and carefully look down for a square opening at the bottom of the engine compartment. You may want to use a flashlight to locate this feature. If you haven't already, remove the sensor from the packaging and unwind the cable. Place the sensor on the ground in front of the vehicle. Now with the coat hanger peeking through the square opening underneath the front end of the Stingray, place the end of the sensor cable in the hook of the coat hanger as shown. Now carefully pull the coat hanger up, drawing the sensor cable with it. The sensor cable now can be carried into the passenger compartment to be connected with the control box. Remove the control box and speaker from the packaging and place them on the passenger seat. Unravel the black and red wires and carry them into the engine compartment as shown here. Next, you need to connect the red terminated wire to the exposed plus 12 volt DC stud. Using the provided 8mm nut and your 13mm socket driver, fasten the terminal on the stud as shown. Please note, it is strongly recommended that you do not remove the existing nut that is on the stud. Also take note on the routing of the red wire below existing cables and hoses. Repeat this with the black wire on the ground stud using the other provided 8mm threaded nut. The ground stud is located towards the front of the vehicle below the alternator. Once you have connected the red and black wires to the appropriate studs, you now need to connect the speaker and sensor wires to the control box. Check the side of the speaker to confirm the switch is in high mode. You are now ready to do the initial system test. Curb Alert is designed to sense voltage above 13.2 before it will turn on. Therefore, simply connecting to a live power point will not cause the unit to turn on. You now need to start the vehicle and listen for a brief startup chirp from the speaker. Curb Alert is designed to stay on while the vehicle is running and for at least 20 minutes after shutdown. You can now shut off the vehicle. If you do not hear anything, check the speaker, power points, and the sensor connection and repeat. In the unlikely event of not getting any sound from your speaker, you should not continue the installation. Contact your supplier for return instructions. 
using the supplied 3M adhesive promoter wipe generously on the underside of the car where the sensor will mount along where the cable ties will be mounted running to the square opening. To mount the sensor, peel and stick to the area shown here. Notice the dimension of 5 inches from the front of the vehicle. This distance works well in our testing with the Stingray. The benefits of mounting here are hiding the sensor from view while still allowing for maximum alert distance. Loosen the hinge fastener with the provided Allen wrench just enough to allow the sensor to pivot up to run approximately parallel to the ground for the next step of distance calibration. Place a tape measure or yardstick on the ground in line with the center of the stingray as shown. Now place a medium sized box at the 20 inch mark from the nose of the car. Once box is in place, press the calibrate button on the control box. You should hear two quick beeps indicating new calibration values accepted and then a constant tone indicating the sensor detects a barrier. Remove the box and test for distance alert point. You can experiment a bit if you'd like on the warning distance, but we recommend this 20 inch setup. After you have settled on a distance to be alerted to, you are now required to set the height alert point. This is the real value of curb alert because the sensor can be adjusted to ignore barriers that are not a threat to your vehicle. The normal threshold we consider to be a threat is anything taller than 4 inches. You may have a different threshold based upon aftermarket front end splitters, a lowered suspension, etc. For the purposes of this video, we will use a 4 inch target to adjust the vertical alert point. Modify the curb alert box as shown. You do not need to damage the box to achieve this setup. Just unfold some of the edges and fold the flaps inward. The objective is to make a knife edge for the sensor to alert to. Place the knife edge box at the same alert distance of the medium size box and then reach down to the sensor and slowly pivot the sensor down until you hear the continuous tone. You have just found the 4 inch threat at your distance. Now using the provided Allen wrench, snug the hinge fastener to secure the setup. To check your alert height setting with high accuracy, slowly bring the curb alert box down vertically at your distance alert point. This approach uses the bottom of the box as the alert point. Observe and confirm alert point is what you are expecting. Our recommendation is 4 inches. Once everything is confirmed to be operating properly, you will need to electronically lock in the calibration. This is accomplished by either cycling power to the control box or waiting for the unit to turn off automatically, which can take up to 20 minutes, depending on when the vehicle was last turned off. Unplugging the fuse on the red power wire is the easiest way to cycle power. It is now time to clean up and finalize the mounting of the control box and the speaker. Put the control box and speaker back into the passenger compartment. Attach at least three cable holds under the vehicle between the sensor and the square opening the cable reaches through. There is a small lip running the width of the car you should place the cable behind. Pull sensor wires and power wires snug to existing wires in the engine compartment. Use zip ties and cable clamps to secure all wires. Snap shut the positive 12 volt DC top and replace cover of fuse panel. Return underhood trim piece to original position. Route wires behind black trim of the lower A pillar using a plastic handle or other non metallic tool. Return rubber trim piece to original position. Return plastic door jam trim while routing wires into passenger compartment. Carefully tuck wires out of sight while snapping trim back into place. Loop excess wires and tuck under dashboard trim in footwell. Peel and stick control box and speaker to your taste under your dashboard in footwell. Once all wires are in place, you're ready to test curb alert from behind the wheel. Place a box at least 6 feet away, large enough to simulate a threat to your bumper in the path of your vehicle. Start vehicle and drive towards the box and listen for the warning beeps. Stop your vehicle when the alert sounds. 
turn off vehicle and check the position of box relative to the front of the car. If the results are acceptable, you're done. If you want to change the results, you will need to repeat the distance and height calibration steps that better match the results you are seeking. Congratulations, you have completed the installation of Kerbalert.